One of the biggest hurdles that really trips up aspiring writers who are wanting to get into the space but struggling to take action uh, is the idea of landing those first few gigs. There's sort of this belief that if you don't have a portfolio, if you don't have any previous experience, no one's going to hire you. And when I tell these people, you know, hey, you just need to get out and pitch, it's kind of like telling someone, uh, hey, just go get a job. Go get a job? Yeah. Just get a job? Why don't I strap on my job helmet and squeeze down into a job cannon and fire off into job land where jobs grow on jobbies? So in this episode, I want to do three things. I want to explain to you what clients are actually looking for in a portfolio um, so that you're aiming for something that's actually going to help you and not just your own uh, misguided, preconceived notion of what a portfolio should be. Uh, two, I want to explain how to quickly create your own portfolio uh, without needing to jump through a bunch of hoops uh, or even work on a bunch of real projects. Uh, and three, I want to explain to you why you don't really need a portfolio uh, to get started um, and why the uh, feeling that you do need a portfolio is really more based on a misunderstanding of how pitching works. All right, let's start with number one. Uh, so when most people think about a portfolio, they're imagining some fairly extensive collection of work uh, with you know impressive brands, uh, testimonials, all this, that, and the other. And they kind of have this idea that the client's gonna um, get into this portfolio and spend some time going around and looking at all the examples, uh, maybe even comparing those examples against other copywriters. Um, but in reality, this is this is pretty much never what happens. Um, when we talk about how a, you know a client actually engages with the portfolio, they're probably only looking at one, maximum two pieces. Uh, and what they're mostly looking for is just to verify that you've done a similar type of work to what you're offering, what you're what they're looking to hire you for, that you've done it before with a client that is reasonably similar to them. Um, so if you have, you know, a really relevant example, uh, that's going to be more impactful to them than this huge body of work. Uh, and now that's not to say that having a big body of work won't impress some clients and won't potentially help you land some gigs. Uh, it could, but for the vast majority of clients that you're reaching out to, they really just care about having that, you know, one or two really relevant examples. And I actually, you know, even in my own work, and what I recommend to writers I work with who have you know, even more experience than I do, um, I actually never advise to send a client to your full portfolio. Uh, instead, I have people send them the one or two very specific examples that mo look most like the gig that they're proposing. Um, and that's worked very well for me, that's worked very well for my students, um, and it just makes sense when you think about it You know, as a busy, business owner, do you really have time to go through and analyze, you know, all these different blog posts? Are you even, are you probably even reading fully through those two examples? Probably not. A blog post is a very low investment in terms of content marketing. And when you're hiring a writer for like, for like a blog post or, you know, an email or um, a little less so with website copywriting, just because uh, I think people pr spend a bit more time you know, looking for the right tone of voice, the right uh, vibe for website copywriting particularly. But for like blogs and emails and some of this other stuff, you know, you're looking at an ongoing scope of work. So people are very, you know, they're willing to hire someone pretty quickly for that first one because they'll learn way more about your skills and how good of a fit you are through that first post, which isn't going to cost them a whole lot compared to, you know, um, spending a bunch of hours reading through all your previous work, which may or may not translate to you doing the piece for them specifically. Um, so all that to be said, uh, when, when we're talking about what clients are actually looking for in a portfolio, it's actually super simple. They just need one or two relevant examples. Um, so how does that translate into our second point? Um, it's very easy to create a relevant portfolio of one or two examples on your own right now. You know, so if you're someone who's been waiting to try to build your portfolio, you don't need to be doing that. What you need to be doing is figuring out what's my initial offer uh, that I'm sending out, and then how can I create one or two examples right now 
uh, to show to those people. So for example, if you're doing the blog post, let's say your offer is you wanna write blog posts for uh, companies in the finance space. Well, all you gotta do is go write two blog posts on financial topics, uh, publish one to medium.com, uh, which you can create your own account and just publish it right there yourself. Uh, do the exact same thing as a LinkedIn article on your LinkedIn account. And boom, just like that, you have two published uh, portfolio pieces that are relevant to what you're offering to send out. And so you no longer, you know, in the time it takes you to write two blog posts, you now have the only portfolio you're really gonna need. Uh, and then down the road, when, you know, if you get, if someone accepts your proposal and you get published on a, you know, a, a real publication, a real blog, you can then replace one of those, you know, self-published links with uh, a link from, you know, from whatever publication you just got published on. So you just replace it as you go. Um, so just like that, you know, this is now no longer a hurdle. Uh, you've now immediately solved this issue. Um, but on that note, uh, I kind of want to carry into the third point, um, which is reframing your lens to understand why you know, you really don't even need the portfolio to get started. And pitching is, I wanna explain why pitching is not kind of the pass fail um, grade that most people think it is. Um, so when we talk about someone who is, is sitting here thinking, hey, I don't have a portfolio, so I can't start pitching, what they're probably seeing it as is me going out and pitching is either, you know, I either succeed or I don't succeed. It's a pass fail grade. So they're thinking probably about one company specifically, let's say company A, and they're thinking, hey, you know, I wanna go write a financial blog post for company A. They're gonna look at me, I'm not gonna have any experience, they're not gonna hire me, you know, uh, or they're not gonna be in the market to get a blog, you know, to want a blog post, uh, or this, that, and the other. There's all these reasons why they might say no. Um, and what you have to understand is, if I, myself, being a six-figure copywriter with eight years of experience, uh, were to go pitch that same blog, there's just, you know, there's a very, very high chance that they'd say no to me. The, in fact, the, the chance for both of us getting hired is lower than the chance that we won't get hired. It's, a, you know, the, the probability is that neither of us will get, will get hired. Um, the difference between you and me is that over the course of 50 companies, pitching 50 companies, there's a higher percentage of those companies that are likely to say yes to me than there are to you, but that doesn't mean that none of them are gonna say yes to you. So when we look over the scope of 50 companies, it's not pass fail, it's a matter of how many say yes, what percentage say yes. And the more experience you get, the more relevant and the higher quality your portfolio, the better your pitches, all these things, all they do is increase the percentage of people who say yes. But you, nobody starts at zero. That's what you have to understand. When you get out and send enough pitches, nobody starts at zero. Someone's going to say yes. Uh, it may take 50 pitches for you to get that first yes. It may take even, you know, if you're super unlucky, uh, it may take you 100 pitches to get that first yes. But some at some length of pitches, you're going to get that first yes. And if you repeat that with those same number of pitches, you're going to get that same yes again. Uh, and then as you go over time, you know, you're going to get to the point where now it's, you know, you send 50 pitches out and you're getting two yeses instead of one yes. You're getting three yeses, four yeses. You know, so at this point in my career, I get a yes every 10 to 20 pitches. So I know that if I go out and pitch 50 people, there's a good chance I'm gonna come back with three or four clients. Uh, it's probably not gonna be that high for you, but that doesn't mean that you aren't going to land clients, it just means the percentage is lower. So you cannot have a portfolio, up, a portfolio at all, you can have nothing going for you, uh, and still get a small percentage just by virtue of sending out enough pitches. So we're really, we're not looking to you know, flip a trigger that says, yes, you can get clients now. You know, everything that you learn from me, everything you learn from other freelancers, everything you learn in this process, none of it just flips a switch from no to yes. All it does is increase the percentage, the likelihood of you getting, you know, X number of yeses over the course of 50 to 100 pitches. 
it's still a numbers game for all of us. And that never really changes. You know, you can get to a certain point where you start bringing leads to you, but that's down the road. Right now, it's about going out and getting in front of people. Uh, and you know that if you send enough pitches, you're gonna get a yes. Um, so I hope I just didn't make that even more confusing with that explanation, but I wanted to really just explain, you know, one, how simple it is to get your own portfolio live, um, and two, that you don't actually need to do it to go start landing clients. Um, you know, you can go out, no portfolio, and with enough pitches, you're gonna land a client or two, and then you can use what you do for that client or two as your portfolio for the next, you know, the next batch, batch of pitches. So anyway, I hope that was helpful uh, and I will catch you in the next video.